Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics. Uh, a lot, so many people liked our video on showing kind of the de design process on how we came up with our kickstand pad for the 2018 Honda Goldwing. I thought I would carry it on and show you, walk you through the manufacturing process so you can kind of see what that, what that looks like. You know, obviously it's a pretty simple looking part, but uh, a lot goes on to get that thing into a wrapper and get it to your door. So. Uh, so once we have a design that's uh, final, finalized and, and finished, and we have a solid CAD model, computer-aided design model, and we've done three-dimensional printing, and we know that it fits the way we want, it looks the way we want, it's going to be cool, now it's time to make some parts. There's a the next guy in between that uh, is our CAM uh, programmer, computer-aided machining, and that's... Uh, he takes the CAD model and converts it into a language that our machinery can understand and writes a program that tells the machine what to go and where to do and how to do it. So once we know he gets a look at it, he gives us, uh, tells us the size of stock we're going to need, raw metal that we'll need. And we order that up. It comes in here. This is our computer controlled stock saw. And this machine is fully automated. It's kind of a, it's a complex version of a good old fashioned bandsaw that you might just cut one piece of metal off for use at home with. But with this machine, we're able to load uh, 12 foot long bars onto a roller system here. And we can stack them up to, uh, I believe 15 inches wide, but we'll typically run about a foot's worth of them. So, and then this saw blade uh, has coolant fed to it and it will just cut a whole stack of these blocks off wide. It actually feeds itself and uh, cuts, retracts, grabs the stock, pulls the stock forward, reclamps, cuts more, repeats that process over and over until these billets start falling down into this hopper we built. Uh, and once it's all done, uh, it'll stop itself, it's, uh, so it's all automatic. This saves tons and tons of time that we used to have a guy have to run this thing by hand. It was very labor intensive. So uh, that saw will cut the parts really, the blanks really nicely to within five thousandths of an inch. So just a hair thicker than a, the sh thickness of a sheet of notebook paper, which is about four thousandths. So, so once we get these cut up into this, our goal is to get one of these out of the inside of it. So come on in the machine shop and we'll have a look here and I'll show you how that happens. Come on. <coughs> All right. So this, uh, our first step is, um, comes on our five axis mill. Um, now while this part doesn't actually require any five axis machining, we use it for what they call three plus two. So typical three axis machining involves uh, a mill, just like a bridge port. You know, you might've seen a, a, an older, a traditional tradesman use, um, which moves a part left and right, forward and backwards, and a tool can move up and down. Those are the three axes on a three axis mill. We use this for what they call three plus two. So we're gonna three axis machine. The plus two is we have two more axes we can hold the part. So we can swing it, up to 240 degrees and we can rotate it 360. And we can do either of those in anything we want. So we can swing the part up, we can swing it up any number of degrees, 24 degrees this way and turn it 12 degrees that way and drill a hole if we need something at a special angle. So it'll do all that automatically for us. And that, this attachment is what makes it five axis. It's called a rotary trunnion. So the trunnion is the swing, the rotary is the, is the rotation. So, uh, we use a special vices on these machines. So just this one vice right here is $2,500. And uh, what this vice does, it has jaws that move perfectly symmetrically on, on the, what we call the Y axis. So it's, uh, uh, move, I'm sorry, Z, that's X on a mill. I gotta get my X, Y's and Z straight. So on the, anyway, on the la lateral axis <laughs> for people, so you understand the left and right. Uh, those jaws open perfectly and close on that uh, center line there. So it's a special kind of vise. We just put the billet up in it and the jaws uh, hold just a hundred thousandths of an inch of material, but they have a little edge to them. So when we clamp on it, it grips it really, really tightly. Uh, then loaded up into the machine is uh, up to 24 tools in a tool changer. You can kind of see up, up top, there's a carousel. And basically the machine plays a shell game constantly. So it will uh, call up the tool that it needs, 
This bar will swing as I'll show you in a second. It'll grab the tool out, swap them, put a tool back up into the tool changer, and then it'll start, start running the part. So behind this is, uh, this is heavy duty bulletproof glass. So um, uh, there's a tool change. If you weren't looking, you missed it. <laughs> so uh, usually there's some sort of primary stock removal that takes place to get the part going towards a general shape that's called profiling. And then a lot of the detail work will take place. Uh, underneath this machine is a 55 gallon pool of what we call coolant, which is about 95% water and 5% of a special liquid that emulsifies in water. Um, that keeps the, the cutting tips lubricated and cool so they don't overheat and burn. So we're able to cut and drill at a rate that's much faster than, uh, you can watch one of those tool changes again. It happens really quickly. Uh, Haas, machiners, Haas machines are made in America and they have one of the fastest tool changes in the industry. So it's pretty slick how, how it does that. So uh, various tools are called up to do all of the jobs. So what we're gonna do with the advantage of using the three plus two machining on a, on a mill like this is we're able to produce basically everything you see here. We'll just, but we'll be holding it by stock that's gonna be waste. Once we get to this point and this part is made to this stage, we're gonna to go to a second machine. <coughs> so this is a three axis mill and it's uh, just a babier version of our big mill over there. And so we get a finished part that looks like this off of the big mill, all right? So you can see it's basically the most of the complete part but um, we're going to um, load it over here. And actually, I don't have the orientation. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. We got a 50-50 shot at this. You wanna see a 50-50 shot? So you'll load the part, tighten it in the vise, Hit the green button and I got a 50-50 shot. I have this oriented right. But anyway, this is gonna do the same thing. Stock removal. Lots of chips flying. These machines also have their own chip conveyor system. So they collect their own waste. Recycle it, bring it up, recycle it, and dump it in a bin for us. And then we take it out into giant uh, containers and uh, have a recycling company come collect it from us. Come on and take a look. So, that's called a shell mill, and the shell mill's removing lots of stock. I mean, it, it does kind of like cutting grass, except we cut it down in stages so that it's uh, taking a safe amount of a cut at a time, not, not too thick, not too much for the tool load or the machine to bear. Um, once uh, you get that stock off the back, then uh, we'll do work that cleans up the backside of it to make it pretty. We'll run a deburr around the edge of the part to clean that up and make it nice. Also prevents it from, uh, in this case from, as you swing it down and tip it on the ground, putting too big of dings in it um, that might end up as like, kind of like burrs right, hanging under it. I thought it'd be nicer if we did that over time. So you can kind of see the general shape is showing up now. And guess what, I got lucky. So my 50-50 chance, <laughs> no, no pressure there. So right now it's doing that cool deburr pass. And actually I think we're done. So that was everything on the backside. The machine beeps, green light flashes. It tells whoever's running the machine that it's finished and it's time for you to come in and change a part. And then we got this. 
We loosen it. There's one completed CNC machined uh, billet aluminum uh, kickstand pad for a 2018 Honda Goldwing. So there you have it. That's uh, how it's made. And uh, so from here, our process is they go to a company that sandblasts them so that the surface gets uh, that nice matte appearance that matches all the plastic on the bike. Then they go off to another company where they're hard coat anodized. And when they come back, we add hardware here and uh, package them. And then uh, hopefully you all place an order for this part and put one on your goal wing. So, all right, my name's Max. Uh, thanks a lot for watching the, uh, these videos. Please uh, give them the thumbs up, uh, share them with your friends. Subscribe to the channel, you know, is all the things I, it helps me uh, keep this cool content coming for you. So looking forward to doing more for you in the future.